to read each time. So we'll be studying um, chapter 6, text 15. Read the first and you can repeat. Yunjayam Satmanam Yunjayam Satmanam No Yogi Niyatan Manasa Yogi Niyatan Manasa Shantim Nirvana Paramam Shanti Nirvana Paramam Matsam Stam Adhikachati Matsam Stam Adhikachati Yunjayam Satmanam Yunjayam Satmanam Yogi The ultimate goal of practicing yoga is now explained. Yoga practice is not meant for attaining any kind of material facility. It is to enable the cessation of all material existence. One who seeks an improvement in health or aspires after material perfection is no yogi according to Bhagavad Gita. Nor does cessation of material existence entail one's entering into the void, which is only a myth. There is no void anywhere within the creation of the Lord. Rather, the cessation of material existence enables one to enter into the spiritual sky, the abode of the Lord. The abode of the Lord is also clearly described in the Bhagavad Gita as that place where there is no need of sun, moon, nor electricity. All the planets in the spiritual kingdom are self-illuminated like the sun in the material sky. The kingdom of God is everywhere. But the spiritual sky and the planets thereof are called parandama, or superior abodes. A consummate yogi who is perfect in understanding Lord Krishna, as is clearly stated herein, 
Machita, Matpara, Matstanam, by the Lord Himself can attain real peace and can ultimately reach His supreme abode, the Krishna Loka known as Goloka Vrindavan. In the Brahma Samhita, it is clearly stated, Goloka Eva Divasatma Vilatma Bhuta, that the Lord, although residing always in His abode called Goloka, is the all pervading Brahman and the localized Paramatma as well by dint of his superior spiritual energies. No one can reach the spiritual sky or enter into the eternal abode, by Kunta Goloka Vrindavan of the Lord, without the proper understanding of Krishna and his plenary expansion Vishnu. Therefore, a person working in Krishna consciousness is the perfect yogi because his mind is always absorbed in Krishna's activities. Sadhana Krishna Padaravindayo. In the Vedas also we learn Tameva Vrivatim Ritum Iti. One can overcome the path of birth and death only by understanding the Supreme Personality of God and Krishna. In other words, perfection of the yoga system is the attainment of freedom from material existence and not some magic jugglery or gymnastic feats to be full of innocent people. So, Srila Prabhupada continues on the same theme from yesterday, or throughout the chapter, um, how yoga is being practiced in such a frivolous manner. You know, yoga today is a million dollar business, if not a multi-million dollar business. And people take to yoga for all different reasons. Some, in the beginning of their spiritual life, Prabhupada describes the yoga process as a, as a ladder, you know, culminating in Bhakti Yoga, which would be the highest rung of the ladder in attaining perfection. But in the meantime, um, he explains that there's so much magical jugglery and gymnastic feats to be full of innocent people. So that means that we have a, quite a task in front of us. In some ways, the fact that yoga has become so popular um, in the Western culture, European culture, um, and even in India, gives us gives a little more of an opening in order to go in and, and teach people what real yoga is. People who before may not be interested in, in yoga at all think it was something weird. Now it's become so mainstream that it gives us a little more opportunity um, to do some to do some nice preaching. Um, Srila Prabhupada, even though he explains that we can reach the abode of Krishna by a cessation of material existence. Oftentimes this is misinterpreted, uh, cessation of material existence, as a cessation of material, a, a cessation of activity itself. And that's why people will, you know, just sit, you know, look at the candles you were mentioning yesterday, or try to, you know, meditate on the unborn within, which Prabhupada explains also is very difficult and very, and very troublesome. But what it really means is that the cessation of material activities, and I was really meditating that Srila Prabhupada has given us so many different kinds of spiritual activities to uh, to fit to fill our to fill our lives. Um, Prabhupada explained that to practice yoga for improvement in health or for material facility, he said that is no yogi. He also pops the void bubble. He says there's no void anywhere in Krishna's creation. It's full of life. Um, no such thing as a void. We know that someone can meditate and go to the void in Prasad uh temporarily, but ultimately, and there is some pleasure there because there is an absence of pain. Like if someone's sticking pins in you and you're feeling the pain, if they take the pins out and don't you feel it anymore, then that feels pretty good. So, because there's so much pain and so much suffering in the material world, um, sometimes just not participating in the world can, can seem pleasurable. But ultimately, it gets boring, it gets tiring, and the yogi who teaches, who, who reaches that remote platform, falls back down and has to continue the process. Um, Srila Prabhupada explains what a consummate yogi is, someone who's perfect in their understanding of Krishna, and by understanding Krishna and working in Krishna consciousness, that that's the perfect yogi. I was thinking how Srila Prabhupada gave us the perfect program for being able to regulate our mind and 
regulate our senses, starting with very early in the morning. I mean, how many of us before joining Christian consciousness would be thinking of getting up at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning to chant Hare Krishna, you know, to go to Mangalarti? So Srila Prabhupada gave us that entire, that entire program, um, Mangalarti, chanting Japa. Um, of course, chanting Japa is probably his foremost gift to us, is his foremost gift to us. Um, he explains, Harinama, Harinama, Harinama eva kevalam, kluna steva, the steva, the steva, gatirna In this age of Kali Yuga, um, there's no other way to attain the supreme abode except for chanting the holy name. And he repeats three times. There's no other way, there's no other way, there's no other way. He also says that um, generally yogis and transcendentalists that they visit different holy places, and he mentions in particular Rishikesh, Haridwar, Vrindavan. But he also says it's very difficult for, um, especially the Westerners, to be able to go to places like that and just sit down peacefully and chant. So basically, what Srila Prabhupada did is he brought the sacred place to us one by one. He opened them up, first one in the Lower East Side, you know, in New York. He just underneath the tree in Tompkins Square. He just opened up one sacred place after another. He made it sacred because of his, because of his presence. So we're very fortunate to, to have all those gifts, um, especially because in Kali Yuga, um, it's explained in verse 12 that people in general, they're, they're short-lived and they're slow in spiritual realization. Always disturbed, but it says above all, always disturbed. And even as devotees, we can experience that. There's so much nectar and so much shelter. But at the same time, there's always something that can disturb our mind unless we're 100% taking shelter of this process of Krishna consciousness that Shil Prabhupada has so kindly given to us. Um, he gave us a perfect program to lift us out of the modes of material nature. Um, besides, you know, Mangar, Teek, and Chapa, Green and the Didi, Srimad Bhagavatam class, which you know usually takes us from four o'clock in the morning to nine o'clock, and we take prasadam. And Shil Prabhupada described prasadam as a, a very important spiritual activity. He called it prophylactic in protecting us against the contamination of the material world. So very. He also explained that when we take food that's especially grains that are cooked by non devotees, it can contaminate our mind. And I believe that in Mahabharata it was cited as one of the reasons that um, Bhishma didn't make you know a complete proper proper decision. So once we've gone through the whole morning program, we're pretty much set for the day. You know, we, we're we, we're trying to surcharge spiritual energy. We're able to go on and practice this yoga process. You know, uh, trying to achieve the position of a consummate yogi. It says in the seventh chapter, the very first verse, Maya Saktamana Karka Yoga Nimuja Varashraya Samasayam Samagarmam Vitala Natchachi Tachchanu that by practicing yoga in full conscious of me, with mind attached to me, you can know me in full, free from doubt. So day by day, as we practice this Krishna consciousness, um, we get more and more facility. Krishna says, as they surrender unto me, I reward accordingly. So as we uh, perform our service, as we become more dedicated, as we try to share it with others, then Krishna gives us more and more understanding. Um, I was remembering that in the beginning of the movement, my husband, uh, and maybe you remember this too, Nalini, that uh, the Sangatan movement mainly consists of going out on Harinam like eight to ten hours a day. You know, he said, at least in Hawaii, that's what they did. They just went out, you know, the men and the women all together, you're in Hawaii, and just chanted eight to ten hours a day. He said, by the time they got home at night, there was a big room, and he said, everyone slept in the room, men and women, but everyone was so tired, there was no question of any other thought was just like, go to sleep, and then get up the next morning and do the same thing. So, completely absorbed in the Holy Name, completely absorbed in preaching, and so attractive, you know. Sometimes Harinam um, is thought of, maybe not so much in India, but but maybe maybe in some of the bigger cities, it's also it's considered a little antiquated, you know, out of date. 
Um, it's something we used to do, but we don't do it anymore. But in Florida, and I'll talk a little bit more about the preaching activities in Florida later, um, it has such a big effect on people. You know, people still love it. There's so many people who still don't really know uh, much about the Hare Krishna movement, and when they see um, all the devotees chanting, they just they're just attracted. They just come up. In fact, um, when we go to Jacksonville, which is a couple of hours away from the Elijah Temple, we'll get you know people dancing with us the whole way, or you know circling us, holding hands, you know, and just dancing all around. So this this Hari Nam Sankirtan is so essential. We should never forget it. We should always try to participate it, to participate in it, even if the people aren't appreciating it so much. You know, Prabhupada said that every time we chant Hare Krishna, it goes around the world seven times and it purifies everything in its path. And in fact, I was reading um, the book that Vyasaki wrote, uh, Radha Damodar Vilas, and he was talking, Vishujan was saying that Prabhupada had told him to go up and perform Harinam in the mountains. And so they did. They went up for the little Sankirtan party. And they came back and they said, Prabhupada said, well, how was it? And they said, well, Prabhupada, nobody was there, you know? You know, we had the kirtan, but nobody was there. And Prabhupada said, so many living entities are there. You know, there's the trees and there's the animals. And, you know, and plus it's going around the world. So that, um, that shared Harinam Sankirtan is so essential in helping us to become uh, consummate yogis. And of course, as time went on, besides the Harinam Sankirtan, book distribution became so important. The Srila Prabhupada translated his books, and as we realized all the ecstasies and Srila Prabhupada's purports, and some of the uh, stalwart devotees went out and started distributing books, uh, we realized that you know this was the next stage in Krishna consciousness. And many devotees made it their, their life and soul to go out every day and distributed Srila Prabhupada's books. In this chapter, Srila Prabhupada also says that a Krishna conscious person has no desire for his own self-satisfaction. His criterion is Krishna's happiness. And also we found that for our criterion was Prabhupada's happiness. I remember once in 1975, I was um, Actually, I wasn't initiated yet, but I love distributing books, so I went on a party with uh, Tamahar and Montrini, uh, another Bhakti and Bhakta, and we traveled up and down the East Coast. And we went to, we saw Srila Prabhupada in all different places, in Washington, D.C., then we saw him in Newford Dobbin, in New York, and Detroit, and Chicago. And uh, in between seeing him, we would be distributing books. We would be at stoplights, you know. I remember once distributing 300 back to back to God in magazines at a um, at a stoplight in Chicago, and we would find that every time we distributed books, you know, with the idea of pleasing Shiloh proper, the next time we saw him, we thought, well, we could see him just a little bit clearer. We could appreciate him just a little bit more. And that's true right now, too, because Shiloh Prabhupada is still here. So as we engage in these activities, you'll find that when you see Shiloh Prabhupada sitting in the Vyasa Sun, that, um, you know, he's looking at you and he's appreciating so much what you're doing. Once when I was in India in 1976, um, we had a, a, a book distribution program in Delhi. We were told, just go out. And go out in Delhi and just distribute books. You know, of course, we didn't know the language; it was a little difficult. And, um, I was distributing books with a devotee named her name is Nartaka Gopala. She's quite I'm quite tall; I'm like five eight and a half, and she was like six foot two. So we found that we didn't have to do much to distribute our books. We just stand there, and people would surround us, looking at Shiloh Prabhupada's white elephants. You know, and we would just hold off the books and tell them how much it was, and they would buy the books. So at the end of the day, everybody counted up their how many books they distributed. And lo and behold, uh, besides the men, um, I had distributed the most uh, books in our topic of Paul, the second most. So uh, we were invited to go on a little traveling Sankirtan um, program with Shiloh Prabhupada, where we went in buses. We went to, I think it was in Modi, Modinikar, and you know, a few different cities where we distribute books during the day. And at night there would be an Anna Parador 
show up and we'd speak, and then we'd stay in life members' houses, and and uh, so it was really fun. Although I remember one day feeling quite out of sorts, you know, feeling sick as you often as often can happen in India. I was almost thinking maybe I wouldn't go, but then I thought, no, 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 I want to please show a prop, but especially you know him being here in India. So I went out and. Uh, I was distributing it, and I happened to turn around, and Shil Prabhupada had driven up in his car, and there was a few of us distributing, and he folded his hands and bowed his head as if to say, "Thank you so much for, you know, helping me spread this message." So it was really very, very sweet, very simple, but very, very sweet. Also, um, there are we've been planting seeds for so long, you know, by by going out and by performing prashad distribution, uh, by performing book distribution, that we're starting to see the fruits of planting our seeds. Uh, you know, yoga, even though it's often malpractice, also kirtan, they're practically become household words. You know, kirtan has become such a big thing. And I know many um, that, like, local people, even in Alachua, they're, they're just more attractive because kirtan has become very popular. There's, Jewish kirtan and all, you know Rabbi kirtan they call it and all kinds of kirtan. So I see that, and also the vegetarianism. Like in 1976, when I flew here, there's no question I had any kind of a vegetarian um, option on the menu. But now wherever you go, almost any restaurant you go to, in every airplane, you know there's choice of vegetarian entree. And I see this all as a result of. Chilla Prabhupada's presence and uh, the seeds being planted and and the, and you know cult cultivation and the fruits are coming. So we have to remember that of course of course along with that um, there's not Kali Yuga is also going full forest. You know it's very sad to see here in India um, how much material life is increasing and how much that is disturbing the simple village life and the simple religious consciousness. So I think that probably the devotees in India have, have maybe more of a responsibility than anybody to be preaching to people because the long, you'll, you'll see, if you haven't seen already, we've certainly seen in uh, America that along with material advancement comes lots of problems, lots of uh, psychological problems, lots of familial problems along with you know computer and television all this kind of thing there's a certain kind of isolation that comes with it that that, that makes people feel not so connected whereas now in, vil in the villages you know in the evening people will get together and they'll chant and they'll do pastimes and they'll cook together um, and which also used to be you know in the west also in the evenings people would get together not so Christian conscious but still there was a sense of community and camaraderie that is this missing more and more. So it's more and more important to preach this message that Shil Prabhupada has given us. Um, I was also remembering that um, all the different ways that Shil Prabhupada has given us, has engaged us, um, just like King Ambarish, you know, there were so many ways that he used his mind the Lotus Feet of Krishna, his words and describing the pastimes of Krishna, his hands and cleaning the temple, his eyes and looking at the transcendental form of the deity, um, his sense of smell and smelling the flowers offered to the Lord, his tongue and tasting prashada and tulsi leaves, tulsi leaves that are offered, his legs and going to pilgrimage places, his head and offering obeisances. So I made um, you know a short list of different activities that Srila Prabhupada gave us. Um, to use in the service of Krishna, and instead of you know ceasing material activities or engaging in material activities, all the different kinds of spiritual activities that he gave to us. So, would anyone like to raise their hand and volunteer different ways that Srila Prabhupada gave us to engage? Come on, I know you all know. Mm -hmm. Yes, serving the deity. Serving the deity. And it's amazing, like in Alachua, well, and everywhere, but it, because I'm from Alachua, I just think of it though. All the devotees are so absorbed in how to decorate the deity and how to please the deity. And 
you know, they go to India just specially, the main purpose is to, you know, order outfits for the deities and make sure they're all coming along nicely. So that's a very important one. Of course, you know, not just dressing the deity, but feeding the deity. What else? What, are kind of, what other kinds of spiritual activities do we engage in all the time that show the Yes? Going on the Going on part of And yeah. that is part of Sevanam. And that is part of Sevanam. I was really amazed <laughs> to see you here. Yeah, I'm enjoying that so much. You're so fortunate to be here all the time doing that. It's, it's really wonderful. Anything else you can think of? Just things that we do every day. Java. 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 Yeah, chanting Java. You know, and that's, that's the most... I, I remember someone saying, um, to a sannyasi, I heard that 90% of the advancement, your advancement comes from chanting your drums. He said, what? I never said that. 90%. I said 100% of your advancement comes from chanting your drums. So just by you know, really hearing the holy name, chanting the holy name carefully, it helps us on that path of bhakti yoga. It will keep us, it will keep us fixed. Anything else you can think of? More program. More Okay, all the, the hearing, the chanting, the remembering. I also wrote down, um, you know, teaching. Uh, I, I teach in the Lachma, so very absorbed in, you know, helping the students and teaching the students. And I notice the Gurkuli here, the teachers are so concerned with the students being able to behave properly and remember. Um, reading books, you know, right now I'm staying with Ratnishri and Yasmin and Alini and Several times a day, they take time out to read Shil Prabhupada's books, and it's very inspiring to see that. And, and every, so many people are engaged in that. Cleaning, cleaning the temple, so many people engaged in that. Opening up temples, um, sewing for the deities, uh, making flower garlands, managing, writing. So many new books have come out. We should never neglect Shil Prabhupada's book should always be foremost. But at the same time, you know, some people are, are um, coming up with some very nice publications, Dancing for the Deities, Distributing Prashada. I was in Miami, and that must have been 19, 1975, I think. Shil Prabhupada was sitting in the, um, outside. It was, it was nighttime. It was beautiful, underneath the banyan trees there, giving class. And um, part of his class, he was talking about Prashada. And uh, he said, all of you have come, in, have come to me because of Prashadam. And he pointed to the temple president, who was you know, the temple president. He said, even you, I'll be wrong. And um, then he said, someone asked Shilla Prabhupada, is it true that if you take Prashadam even once, that you're guaranteed a human birth in your next life? And Shilla Prabhupada said, yes, that is true. And everybody went, Yay, hooray, like, we've got it made, you know? We're going to at least get a human birth. But then Prabhupada said, but there are some species of monkeys that are considered human. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody got real quiet and sober again. So, um, but there we go again. Prashadam is, is so important. And uh, no yagi is complete without prasadam distribution. And I know so much is done here and also um, in Florida, we do so much prasadam distribution. So, engaging in all these activities, it just helps us to remember Krishna all throughout the day. Uh, the last version of this chapter is Yogino Mapisarisham Katena Atraama Sharavam Bajate Yama Mustama Yuktamatoma Taha. The yogi who abides me with great faith, rendering transcendental loving service is the most intimately united with me in yoga and is the highest of all. So even though in our practice of Krishna consciousness, it may not always be 100% every day, we find that the more we engage in, in bhakti yoga, Krishna consciousness, uh, the more that our senses are detached from the sense objects. And that is the practice of yoga. As our senses become detached from sense objects, they become attached to Krishna, it's not artificial. As we become more and more in love with Krishna and engaged in the service, we automatically become less attached to the sense objects. So as we fill our day with all these different kinds of activities, you know, playing music is another, you know, kirtan and 
you know, becoming an expert in harmonia and jungle, so many different instruments, that's another, that's another way. So Shilpat states that culmination in all the different kinds of yoga practice lies in bhakti yoga. He says that from the beginning of karma yoga to the end of bhakti yoga is a long way to self-realization. But when one comes to the point of worshiping the Supreme Person of Godhead, um, that is a culmination of good fortune. So we are in that position of extreme good fortune. And now, and Prabhupada would often say this too, now you have become fortunate, so now it is your duty to make others fortunate. So it's wonderful here that so many books are being distributed daily, that they're uh, sharing that with everyone, how many books they distribute. And uh, they have like a daily Prashad distribution for the most of them, right? Okay, so the point is we're, we're on the path of bhakti, we know what the goal is, which makes all the difference. So as we become more attached to Krishna, we will lose our lower taste. So Param Drishma Nivartite, as was mentioned in yesterday's verse, um, as you experience a higher taste, you give up the lower taste. Just like if somebody, um, if they're eating, you know, Wonder Bread every day, and um, you know, enjoying it. If someone comes along with homemade bread, you know, fresh from the oven, and they give that to you, and you're like, wow, this is wonderful. How hard is it to give up the Wonder Bread? Not very difficult. So that's our situation. As we engage in more activity, we're able to give up the lower activity. And Prabhupada says, as the chapter goes on, that as we become more and more in love with Krishna, that we'll see happiness and distress, heat and cold, honor and dishonor, pebbles and gold as all the same. So that's a pretty high platform, you know. That, that's something to aspire for, to see all those things as the same. Um, and also, I was thinking, it takes a lot of, of, of the verse in uh, Nectar Instruction, Utsahan Nishchadarya Tatya Kama Pravartanat enthusiasm and determination and I was remembering the story of the, the sparrow um, it's a great story where the sparrow laid his eggs very close to the, um, the shore of the ocean and a big wave came along and carried the eggs out into the ocean so the sparrow was very distraught and he started to ask the ocean, you know, please return my eggs, and would you please return them? And it was just an insignificant sparrow, so the ocean absolutely paid no attention, you know. But he, he didn't give up, he kept on praying. And uh, the word got out, the word started circulating, and Garuda heard of it, and Garuda was like, oh, wow, okay, well, I'm going to go there, and I'm going to help this little sparrow. So he got there, and he said, return the, if you don't return the eggs, Oh, I know what it was. The sparrow said, I'm going to start, I'm going to drink up this ocean, drop by drop, until it's completely dry. The ocean was like, yeah, right. But when Garuda came and said, I'm going to drink up the ocean, then the ocean became scared and immediately returned the eggs. So, just like that, you know, sometimes our efforts may seem puny and insignificant. But as, as we try, Srila Prabhupada, he gives us so much help all the time. You know, we've all experienced it. You know, we may run into difficulty, but the best thing to do is, you know, just take every day as a unique uh, section of time and just do our best each day. Just wake up with that kind of mentality. Shil Prabhupada will give us will give us all help. Um, so I wanted I was asked to talk a little bit about the activities that are going on in the Lodge. The Lodge is kind of famous because there's you know, probably like a thousand devotees in the community. And, you know, all the devotees are engaged in all different kinds of um, work. One of the most famous programs that we have at the, in, in that area of Latcher Gainesville is a prasadam distribution program at the University of Florida, which has been going on for like 40 years. It's so famous that sometimes there'll be 1,000 students lined up, and that's not always a thousand, you know, but always a lot, lined up to get prasadam, and they'll give, you know, like a four or five dollar donation. They love prasadam, we're famous, like, we have a very good reputation, people, 
know us, and uh, there's all kinds of stories. Like there's one story of a devotee who went into a bank to get a loan. He was standing in line uh, for a while, and then someone from one of the offices, the upstairs offices, saw him and said, "Hey, come here," you know. So he went upstairs and he said, "What do you want?" He goes, "Well, I wanted to get a loan." And, he was kind of asking, well, what kind of collateral do you have? And the devotee didn't have much in terms of collateral. But he said, I'm going to give you the loan anyway, just because you guys fed me all the way through grad school. I don't know how I would have made it without you. Um, so they have a wonderful program. And not only is it for side distribution, but they have a lot of kirtaniyas go out every day also. So they have a wonderful bhajan program. And they have, they've, uh, they've been able to buy property all around, you know, different little houses around the, the preaching center. So now they have um, students who want to stay at the preaching center, and there's so many of, of them that want to stay there and engage in Christian consciousness that they have to apply, and they have to write an essay about why they want to stay there, and then they can select, you know, the people that they think are serious, and they can stay there for some time. And then they'll have, you know, a new program. Um, so that is an exceptional program that's made many, many devotees. We've made so many, and I know Shil Prabhupada is so pleased with that because he was especially interested in the educated population. He was interested <coughs> in everybody, but he knew that the educated population would be able to help him spread this mission. Um, also, at the homecoming parade, we always have a float in the home, homecoming parade. Or if not a float, we're just in it. You know, we're marching, we have our banners, etc. And I notice that oftentimes uh, at the end of the Rock Theatre, someone will come up and say, you know, you guys are the only ones in the parade that really look like you're having a good time, you know? Because mm -hmm. we are. We're having a great time. You know, we're chanting Hare Krishna and uh, giving up Prashadam, and it's just very blissful. Um, another exceptional program that we have in Florida, there's some devotees who are completely devoted to Rathiatra, so we don't, oh, we don't just have the Rathiatra in the homecoming parade in Gainesville. We have one in Jacksonville. We have one in St. Augustine. We might have one in Tampa. <coughs> we have one in Tallahassee. And sometimes they even go to other states. There's some big festival in Tennessee they go to every year also. Um, I went to the one in St. Augustine this year, and it was, it was wonderful. St. Augustine is the oldest city in America, and the mayor came um, for, the, for the inauguration before the festival actually started, and he gave a really nice talk. He was explaining that St. Augustine was made up of so many threads, and it was made up of you know, threads from the Spanish community and threads from the Portuguese community and the African community. And he said, and, and St. Augustine is also made up of threads from the Hare Krishna community. Because, and we're so, ha we're so happy that they're a part of our community. So again, it just proves that kind of the drops of water wearing away at the stone, you know, and the more that we're out there, the more that people hear the holy name, the more that people honor prasada, the more that it become the more they become purified and the more they can understand. There's so many stories of devotees who would try to avoid the saint, you know, the Harnam Sankirtan party. Like I remember one devotee saying he would see the devotees and he would cross the street to go on the other side just to avoid them. You know, day after day, I don't know how long he did it. But then one day, I don't know, maybe he was too tired to go to the other side of the street. He just walked by, and he got a book, and he read it, and he became a devotee. And there's so many different stories like that with, with book distribution also. You know, I did, you know, a lot of us did book distribution at the airport for many years, and, and sometimes the books would end up in the garbage, but then you would hear somebody who found a book, a janitor who would find a book in the garbage and read it and become a devotee from that. Or uh, one, one man found a book, his motorcycle broke down, and uh, so he was just sitting there trying to think of what he was going to do next. And uh, he, there was a book on the ground, so he picked it up and he read it, and became a devotee. 
And the amazing thing about these books is that they're, she'll probably explain that they're like deities, you know, that they, that even if someone gets a book and they don't read it and they put it up on the shelf, and there was a devotee named Kun Kun who confirmed this. She said she got a book at the airport, didn't really want it, but she got it. She put it up on her bookshelf. She said it sat there. It was like there seven or eight years, long, long time. So she said she was just sitting, you know, on her sofa one day, and she looked up. She saw the book, pulled it down, she read it, and was just like, oh my gee, oh my God. <laughs> and went to the temple, became a devotee. So um, these books, they they act, you know, they they're deities and they purify their poems. So the more we can be engaged in these activities of book distribution, um, prasad distribution. Also, we have um, our youth are extremely active in Alachua, which is, is giving us all so much hope. One of the activities, and I'm sure you've heard of it, uh, Jai Rade and Manu, they, um, for years, they've been taking the youth out on a bus program. Um, the year that my daughter went, I went out, I went out with her for two, I was thinking I'd go for the whole thing, but after two and a half weeks, I pretty much had enough. The way they do it is they have um, bunks set up on the bus, uh, in a, like a tier of three, and it's very close. So maybe when you get into the bunk, you've got about uh, this much room. So if you're claustrophobic, probably not a good idea to go on the bus tour. But, but they love it, you know, they totally love it. So they, they just travel from city to city. Oftentimes, um, what's the sannyasi's name from Canada? Bhakti Maharaj yeah. He travels with them, and in a very short time, he trains them up in drama. He's a very expert at drama, so they have this have this play. So they'll breeze into a city, and they'll do, um, you know, they have a, have engagement somewhere. They'll do the uh, Bharatna in dancing. They have, always have the girls who know Bharatna in dancing, and they'll do the play, and they'll do book distribution and prasad distribution, and they'll do the all over the U.S., uh, all through Canada, and during Christmas time, they do it all throughout Mexico. So, wonderful, wonderful program. Many, many young people who were maybe born devotees but kind of separated uh, for one reason or another are completely turned around after going on that program. Also, we have some student, uh, some young people who are very involved, like the Mayapuris, who, you know, started this. Um, Kind of bhajan band, and they also have engagements all over the world. Um, I think the Kirtanias is another one, and oh, we also have um, a very active Gurukula. <clears throat> it starts with preschool. Actually, Yasmin is very much involved in man helping to manage the Gurukula and you know help to teach in it, teach teachers. So that goes from preschool to sixth grade. Yes. Right now, yeah. But there's, um, you know, plans in the works to take it through middle school and ultimately through high school. And we also have a charter school that some devotees wrote a charter for based on uh, values, life skills, and multiculturalism. That has a lot of devotee students in it. They serve prasadam. It's all funded by the government. They serve prasadam uh, breakfast and lunch. And everybody knows they call it the Hare Krishna school. But we don't have just devotees there. Many uh, non-devotees send their children there too because they know it's academically an, ex an excellent school. So, you know, all these different ways that there are preaching besides the outstanding ways of having Gordi Thai, Krishna Bala, and Radhi Sham because it's New Roman Reiti. So, uh, <laughs> make sure that if you get a chance, come because it's a wonderful community. Yes. I just want to mention that Gainesville, Prabhupada actually visited Gainesville. Yeah. And he said, uh, so it's a Tirtha, you know, it's actually yeah. a very special place. Yeah. And he said, do something, this is not an exact quote, but he said, do something great in this remote corner of the world. He said, uh, by chanting, kirtan uh, and distributing Prashanam. And the devotees actually took that very seriously. Along with his blessing, right? Oh, absolutely. Which made it, made it all, yeah. made it all happen. Yes, yes. I just want to also mention that this year, Mabasukada's class became number one in the whole district for academics. 
What age do you teach? I teach sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Like, but it wasn't just my, you know, my classes. Also, all the math classes came in first, also in the writing class. So, I mean, I think you know, devotees, whatever they do, they do it for Krishna in some way. You know, they do it for preaching. And so they, they really work really hard at it, you know, helping the students. And uh, some of you know Madhuri Leela, she used to, she lived here for many years, she teaches math. And uh, she works so hard. Oftentimes she sits after school and has special tutoring programs for kids who are falling behind. And it doesn't get anything extra for that. So it's all uh, definitely all show of it's mercy. So anyway, all of these, just to bring it back to the chapter, all of these activities help us to uh, stay on the path of bhakti, help us to become perfect, consummate yogis. Are there any really questions or anything else you'd like to share? Um, you are your proper disciple? Yes. And uh, what is the exact meaning of the word consumer? Um, like ultimate, like perfect. Yeah. The consummate yogi, the perfect yogi, because Prabhupada mentions in this chapter that all the different, you know, the, all the different kinds of yoga that there is. But he explains that there's not really any yoga, really, besides bhakti yoga. But until you come to that platform of, of loving Krishna, you're devoting everything to Krishna, it's not, it's not really yoga. You know, it, it's so many words. So. Yes. We're very fortunate. Yes. Well, tell me about the last word that I find appropriate is that, as you mentioned, there's maybe a thousand devotees. And naturally, all those hundreds of different devotees have different approaches, different ways of life, different mm -hmm. levels of sadhana, different guru ideas, different backgrounds, but everybody is tolerant and respectful to each other rather than always clashing between different groups. It's a place where you can find, you know, a group that fits in with your particular style and everybody chants together as well. Right. That's right. Shil Prabhupada is so tolerant of us, you know, so so tolerant of all our mistakes. I mean, to think of Shil Prabhupada coming at such an advanced age, you know, suffering two heart attacks on the boat. I mean, I, I was thinking this morning, I was so tired that maybe I shouldn't go out on the uh, hard car. <laughs> How silly when you think of everything that Shiloh Prabhupada did, even after, you know, suffering, you know, heart attacks like that and coming to a place in America um, so foreign and just, um, just, you know, he had a sponsor. And this really struck me too, this that he stayed at the Agarwal's house. I wish you remember the interview that Sally Agarwal gave on, on your ever well wisher. I'm sure everybody's seen that very wonderful film. And so she's relating this the time the story of the time when Shil Prabhupada was visiting and uh, explaining that <clears throat> how wonderful it was to have Prabhupada making prashad for you know in his his layered tiffin, how he could make everything in 45 minutes, and how it tasted so good. And then she was saying how excited he was when their little son took his first steps, and how he clapped. And she was just relating the different pastimes. And then she stopped and said, "I don't think I've ever enjoyed anything as as much as that." And then she said, "In my whole life." And it was like she just realized right then how much she realized it. And I was like, wow, incredible. Because she, you know, she was married to an Indian man, but she was an American woman. So it wasn't that, you know, that all meant so much to her. It was just the pure devotee and the potency of the pure devotee that's so attractive. And when he comes into our presence, um, you know, what a, what a change it makes. And of course, he's still here in, in his books and in his instructions. So. Um, it's always nice on Shiloh Prabhupada's appearance day or any day to recommit ourselves to his mission and just really try to do as much as we can. So, there's no... Yes? What subject do you teach? I teach language arts. Language arts. Yeah, reading and writing. and You know, it's a public school, so I can't really like teach Bhagavad Gita. But what I can do, like for example, um, 
once I asked everyone to write about their hero, who their hero was. And I asked them to bring in a picture, draw a picture of the hero. So in a very short time, my bulletin board was filled with uh, uh, pictures of uh, Shil Prabhupada, you know, Hanuman, Arjuna. So the students really do the preaching because there are a lot of devotees. So even though I can't directly preach, I can facilitate the Hare Krishna students in, you understand? In, in being able to kind of preserve their identity. You know, it's not the best, <laughs> but we're working on getting a complete Virakula, um, you know, established. In that school, we also teach Kabbalah stories and uh, teach qualities. So that way it's not directly Christian conscious, but you can teach with compassion for the kids. Like we have one project um, that I do with the students called the Values Project, and uh, they're allowed to pick any service to the community. You know, they can decide. And but some of the the projects students have chosen is cow protection, and they you know they'll raise money for it and give it. Actually, they gave it to uh, what's his name, Rupa Kurma. Kurma. Yeah, maybe it was Kurma, and before that it was oh, Rupa Roberts. Yeah, for his. Uh, I remember my daughter did it. She raised money to help some of the less fortunate for clothes and all that. So it kind of you know puts them in a position of thinking a little bit outside themselves. As Shri Prabhupada says, uh, a consummate yogi, he's not thinking of what he wants for himself. He's thinking of how he can help the world. So it's just kind of like a step in the right direction. The students have done their projects on book distribution. They've gone out and distributed books. You know, and other students will do it on, um, you know, serving on, a, a, you know, on jury of a, peer, a teen court, or you know, all different kinds of things like that. But it's a, it's a nice experience. So by the time they graduated in eighth grade, they've done three different projects. They're quite in-depth projects. They have to write about it. They have to have pictures of it. They have to display it. And um, once they display it, then we have a big, um, like a fair where people, the parents come and they view it and they have to, you know, pres do an oral presentation to their peers and also to their parents. So, just some of the things that we're, that we're working on. Yes, one more thing. Like you said, book distribution and Alachua. So, the Islam, Islam and Christianity are the <coughs> fastest uh, growing religions. Yeah. Uh, means uh, the world is majorly populated with Islam and Christianity amongst uh -huh. the people. So how we can be optimistic in, this, in spreading Christian consciousness in Western countries like America is also and uh, other places to get my... Well, I know that in America there is a lot of disillusion, a disillusionment with uh, Christianity just because, um, you know, a lot of the, especially with a lot of the young people. So how can you not be disillusioned? I think just remember, Lord Chaitanya said that this movement would be, you know, just it would go to every town, village, and farm. So my vision is it's just a matter of time, you know, because the movement it is so attractive. It's so you know it's so attractive that really it's just going to take more. You know, by distributing prasadam or by chanting more. That is what, what changes everything, right? That's what changes, allows people to have realizations. Because we have, I mean, I was from a Christian background. She was from a Christian background. She was, and he was, and you were, and, you know, most of us were. And we all became devotees, you know? We were, you know, we were, I was brought up Catholic. I was disillusioned with it, and I just, you know, I, I had a very uh, superficial understanding of God. So I think when people, you know, actually as their desire grows to understand God more, you know, that's when Christian takes the steps. Like in my life when I just um, felt like, wow, you know, what is life about? And I just really want to know more about God. And that's when I'm going to go in. So um, I, Christian's arranging everything. And Lord Chaitanya says it's going to happen. Shiva Prabhupada says it's going to happen. And, and We've seen what we've, we can see what's happened <coughs> already. So um, I think don't be disillusioned. Be very, very 
positive yeah, that this is stay positive. Yeah, this is happening. Yes. Yeah, I remember Gopal Vrindapal once asked Prabhupada the same question. Oh really? A similar question, but you know, how can we influence people to take to this permanent and he was thinking that Prabhupada would say Sankirtan or book distribution. And Prabhupada said, and I can't say it exactly, but that if they will just spend 48 hours with you, you know, it's just like to spend the time with the devotees and to be influenced personally, then they will see. And it, it was like Gopal said that he was really amazed. I'm not sure this is 24 48. Yeah, well, that's, that's very important actually. It's an important point because you see what Chil Prabhupada did because of his purity and what happened and how things spread. So as we become more pure, you know, then we'll, be, we'll have more effect on other people. So, in one sense, it's kind of up to us, you know, how much we want to do. You know, but it, it, all facility is there. Can you just repeat what she said? Sure. Maja, you want to just come up and say it in the microphone? I think we have Okay. wants yes. everybody to hear it, like, you know, because it's going on. Yeah. 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 I meant like on the radio, too, though. Um, it doesn't go to the... you say it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll try. Um, Anjari just said that Gopal Vrindapal asked Prabhupada a similar question as Prabhu, in, the, in, in that how can we not become a little discouraged that maybe the movement isn't spreading as quickly as we like. Correct? Oh, no, how can we influence people? How, how can we, we best influence how people? How can we best inf influence people? And she'll probably answer if they just spend uh, either it was either 24 or 48, 48 hours with you, then um, they will become transformed. So, and then we're just talking about how important it is to become purified so that we can be an instrument, just like uh, Arjuna, you know, Nimitta Matram, just become an instrument. So as we become pure, then we become Krishna's instrument, and uh, there's the sky's the limit, right, as to what we can do. Okay? Yeah. All right. Thank you so much.